So ano usap usap na ang Team Sevens about um, about yoga's true identity. But sinasabi nila na uh, magkakapal ang pangalan pero ang pinakaibidensya nandun sa ID card. So, uh, well, they they were racking their brains as to how uh, probably to how to tell this to Yuga and well, Mimi suggested that Luke challenge him to a corporate entertainment rush duel kasi sinasamantala ni Mimi yung pagiging uh, kasi may pagka power hungry din itong si Luke eh. he wants to become number 2 kay Luke kay Yuga and if uh, in in the event Yuga well resigns from Goha siya ang papalit as president gano'n lang yan eh ngayon gusto gusto maging number 3 si Mimi so if ever na maging number 2 si Luke sisipahin lang niya sa presto ito so siya na magiging number 2 eventually magiging number 1 na siya magiging president na swapang din eh no the duel is now on so kinamon lang talaga ni ni Luke si Yuga remember Luke has a winning streak going on against Yuga. Yeah, sarap ano, eh, pang, pang nagde-duelo, dalawang to eh. Sa una, parang malamya kung wari makipag si Luke. Okay. Ito lang si Yuga, all out. Un- Walang yan, unang turn pa lang. Maximum sa mulagad. Wow! Yuga really wants to beat Luke kasi this is the only guy he is yet to beat in a rush duel. And it's Starts pa from season 1 So uh, Okay All out na siya Maximum summon Pero um, As the duel went on Napapansin na ni Yuga na Mukhang nagpapatalo si Luke So He is now seeing through uh, Luke and Mimi's plan Na uh, Maging Farce ang duel na to pero uh, habang nagtutwela sila naalala ni Luke yung ginawa sa kanya ng lelong niya ganitong ganito rin kita rin niya kay Yuga na hindi rin masaya si Yuga kasi at this point talagang nakalata na ni Yuga na nagpapatalo si si Luke sinabi na lang ni Luke a rush duel that ain't serious isn't gonna make Yuga happy something to that effect so oy all out na kagad si Luke now the duel is now a back and forth affair akala ni Yuga nanalo na siya but all of a sudden Luke activates Seven's chance giving him uh, a 3000 life point boost so nung umatak si nung umatak yung bagong fusion ni Yuga na uh, Lion Cross Ash 300 life points pa na lang ang sa kanya. So, it's now his turn. Lo and behold, he uses fusion for the first time without turning into the Luke Man, of course. So, nasamo niya si Dragon Star F. Eventually, he beats Yuga. Much to, <laughs> much to the dismay of, uh, of Yuga. Eh, ayun, dabog mode na siya uli. <laughs> nah. That, 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 that's the second time he has done that. That's the second time he's done that. Grabe. Ito lang yung natatangi dulis ng hindi niya talaga matalo. So, final scene. Uh, they share a uh, a bowl of kaki udon together. So, parang, well, in the end, at the end of the day, bali, wala sa kanila ang duelong yun. Which, uh, to the delight of uh, the rest of Team Sevens. Kasi, sabi nga ni G- oh, Gakoto said it well. No matter if uh, if Yuga is the president or not, those two will never change. Totoo naman yun. So, well, let's just break this down ARD style. Pace. Well, for the first time since last episode, I did not experience a single sleeper moment in this uh in the dual scene so isa lang ibig sabihin sa akin on the pacing was really really good 
Kasi doon ako talaga na-experience ng, uh, ng intensity sa pacing in the dual scene. Which is natural for a Yu-Gi-Oh! episode. So, kaya, hindi lang ako no complaints. I was really, really satisfied. Kasi, <laughs> it's, basta, Yuga versus Luke, talaga ang kapanapan ng bigay. You would, uh, uh, you would really cheer for Yuga to, to beat Luke. And if you're a Luke fan, you would always, uh, kasi, uh, kung makikipagpusta ka, abay, kay Luke na ako. It was actually one of the most enjoyable duels I have seen in this, uh, in this particular series. And wow. The pacing made me feel that, well, Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens is back, rush duel-wise. Flow naman. Well, first gear shift here was, um, was when Mimi hatched a plan with, uh, with Luke para medyo mabago yung, yung hierarchy when it comes to Yuga. Just in case he, he, just in case na-confirm na na he is the sixth president. Why did I call it a gear shift? Well, simply lang. Umiiral pa rin ang pagiging... Uh, what's it called this? Power hungry ni, ni Mimi. She would even go to great lengths as to use uh, a character that is now close to her heart. Kasi, what? Tirotoro naman siyang kaibigan ng Team 7 eh. And now, she's abusing uh, Luke's denseness. To, to climb her way back into the Goha presidency. <laughs> I'm beginning to doubt her again because of this gear shift. Second gear shift was when um, Yuga realized that um, nagpapatalo si Luke. That Luke is deliberately losing this match. Why did I call it a gear shift? Well, simply lang. Yuga may be... Uh, maybe too caught up in his inventions or in the rush to on how to improve on the rush to format but he's not that dumb kasi um marami na rin sina pinagsama ni Luke kaya gamay na gamay niya ang ugali nito so nahalata niya agad hmm pinapatalo pa ni Luke ang duel na to so, doon talaga nag-upisa yung, kumbaga yung kawalan ng gana niya sa duelong ito. Uh, at nahalata naman ni Luke. If it weren't for this gear ship, hindi mahalata ni Luke na hindi masaya si Luga sa, hindi masaya si Yuga sa duelong ito. But, pero usually, if it's a, uh, if it, uh, if Luke is the opponent, all-time high ang happiness ni, ano, ni Yuga. But, in this instance, nope. Nakita ka agad look yun. That's why I call it the gear shift. Kumbaga, this gear shift is a test of their friendship. So, oo nga. Um, Luke has a winning streak going against Yuga. Pero, ngayon ka pa ba magpapatalo? Based on, um, based on a currently dumbfounded uh, lie and I'm talking about the uh, the ID huh? I'm talking about the ID here final gear shift was when <laughs> Luke beats Yuga for the fourth time kaya right now the only undefeated duelist in this Yu-Gi-Oh! series is not the main protag but one of its lead characters si Luke well bakit ko tinawag na gear shift to uh, um this win by Luke uh, totally realigned him with uh, what, what's uh, most important in a rush duel. Having fun. Right? And also, uh, this somehow made Yuga realize that you may be the creator of rush duels, but there is one rush duelist you can't beat. Si Luke. <laughs> yeah? Loud and clear, Yuga Yuga. Loud and clear yun. So these three gear shifts that I saw, all of them may play a role down the line in season two. Uh, and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't fully discern kung 
alin dito sa mga to ang talagang magkakaroon ng impact later on in the show. Pero gear shift pa rin yan. Plot wise, malinis. Kasi yung main continuity ng episode na to, it focused on um, not on Yuga's true identity. Nope. But on how uh, Luke handled the situation. Yuga's happiness is uh, is being upheld here by Luke. And, uh, well, if Yuga is down, Team Seven is down. Natural yun. That's what this plot will make you realize. Ganun kasi kalinis ito. So, base, flow, and plot. <laughs> I almost did not tell the, um, the pacing from the, from the plot. Nakita niya naman kanina, nagka, muntik na ako magkamali. Ang galing talaga bumawi ng Yu-Gi-Oh! So, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 73. Wow. From this to the two thumbs up. Lakas bumawi. <laughs> Kasi, um, uh, I didn't have a single sleeper moment in this dual scene. It, sa dual scene ng episode na nun. Kasi, it's Yuga versus Luke. Uh, the two uh, the two lead characters of this anime. So, they they go at it a fourth time. And, <laughs> Luke still wins. Pero, um, long term, hindi iniinda ni Yuga ang, ano eh, ang, ang losing streak na to. Because he's uh, uh, To him He's got better things to do Like uh, Improving on the Rush Duel format Improving on his own game Yeah You guys are walking lesson in uh, In uh, Skill recovery So to speak Kasi The only way for you to uh, To get out of the funk of a loss Is by just By just Playing the game again We've learned this in Build, Divide, Gold, Black. Talala nyo yung mga lifestyle So, now, Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens is teaching it the same thing to us. Yu-Gi-Oh! Style, yun nga lang. So, again, Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens, Episode 73. This is another mic drop. What do we do now, Patreon and Maka Lifestyle? Siempre, the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Hopefully, uh, uh, they would give us a, uh, well, a more exciting storyline. So, if you're on Patreon, just wait for the next up. Just wait for the next upload. But if you're YouTube exclusive. Wala ka magagawa. Enjoy the reviews in this digest. Hmm. First time kong gagawa ng review sa labas ng bahay ko. As in. Now, let's run it down. We pick up where we left off in the last episode. Dahil, well, nabarit pala si Kuruma sa ulo. And, um, the first to respond, well, ironically, are Mickey and Oliver the CIA so they were able to um, to transport Kuruma to the CIA's secret hospital on the sea that's the uh, I forgot or we forgot the name so inaaten na nila si Kuruma they're, they're trying to save his life Botan goes into this self-pity moment of sorts she tried to cool herself off by um, not storming out of the room then getting some water May napansin siyang naka ano uh, lalaki na parang nahihirapan huminga so tinanong niya kung bakit then suddenly she gets used on with a shard mm. ang taong ito ay may shard pero iba pala ang power ng shard na to there well, 
it relies on a person's electrical impulses para makontrol niya ang isip nito. Mm. Nakontrol ng tao ito yung uh, isip ni Botan. Then, oh, she comes back uh, lashing out uh, Kyohei and Ryunosuke. Yung pala, itong patong uh, the room they were in well, is actually under surveillance by Mickey and Oliver. Meron palang si Net na traps doon si Mickey para talagang para talagang mag-away-away sila. But, uh, he felt something was off. Tinignan niya yung ibang footage ng, ng ibang kwarto. Ayun, nakita niya. Something is controlling Botan. Tapos biglang uh, what this? Tinawas nila ng boss nila ng babae. So, sinab sinabi ng boss nila, find that Find that a small house agent and get rid of him. At the same time, well, get both shards. Get both shards for the CIA. Eventually, nagpakita na ang small house. Their one of their agents' name is Pino. Eto ang may hawak ng shard na kumukontrol kay Botan. Very devious pala ang plan ng dalawang small house agents na to. The other one is uh, nah, I already forgot his name. Eto yung eto yung hacker niya. They're going to use the shard to control everyone on the ship. And yep, they did. Through their through everybody's smart glasses. Or any uh yan, pag nakatapat ka sa computer monitor, makokontrol ka ng shard na to. So, that's exactly what happened. They got everybody to to get every every staff and crew on the ship to turn on both Japan safety and uh, the CIA agents, sila Mickey and Oliver. Final scene. Nagkita kita ng tatlo sa isang malaking uh, parte ng, ng ship na to. And of course, yung mga zombies na kinokontrol nila. Wow. Another standoff to end an episode. Typical of a spy trailer, but this one's uh, this one's quite unique. So let's break this down. ARD style. Base. From the get-go, tense na ang pacing dahil uh, they're trying to save a life. Si Kuruma pa. But well, we all know what happened. If you saw the, if you saw this episode, you know what happened to Kuruma. He actually uh, helped Botan snap out of the control of the shard. <laughs> In a really funny way. So, medyo nag, uh, nag-tone down ang pacing ng episode na yun at that moment sa scene na yun. Then, it went up again, ayun, uh, moments before the final scene. Yung pacing ng episode na yun is very typical of a spy thriller. Kasi, ang dami naglalaban ng faction para makuha mga shards of Tesla. So, pero talagang may gusto makuha nito lahat is a small house. Ayun, nagpalandam na sila sa episode na to. The pacing will make you um, feel that. Yeah, no complaints. First gear shit here was when uh, during the opening scene when Mickey offered to well not just offered uh, obligated to uh, to save Kuruma's life by uh, utilizing the CIA's mobile hospital. Why did they call this a gear shit? Because well, ain't it obvious? It triggered the entire episode. Tsaka, what? Hindi naman ano eh. Uh, although na may ulterior motives sila Mickey at Oliver, syempre ang habol na nila yung shark. Nung pa kinala kay Kuruma kung mamatayan. Diba? Umiral pa rin sa kanila yung pagiging ano eh. Yung... Uh, what you call this? They have the moral obligation to, to save Kuruma's life. Kasi, whoever shot Kuruma at that point in the episode, but... I'm very... But, sini siguro doon nila Mickey na hindi sila yun. Hindi CIA yun. So, they're... Right there in them, the CIA agents instantly assumed that a small house was behind it. Eh, pero mo naman, parling ba naman sa ulo si Kuruma? Ganon sila ka-desperado. Second gear ship was, well, Pino made his presence known. Nung nagpakilala siya sa Japan Safety. He assumed many disguises, but at the same time, 
pinatay niya ang mga taong ginaya niya. Why did, what, why did I call this a gearship? Simple lang. This goes to show us that a small house is this ruthless. They are this determined to to gather all the shards. Talagang willing silang pumatay ng ganong karaming tao para makakuha lamang ng isang shard man lang. Kasi eh, It's not just them that uh, that are after the shards. It's also Japan City. There's also the CIA. So, yung shard na nakuha nila ngayon, na nasa kanila ngayon, they uh, they use it to their advantage. Kaya, gearship pa rin. Kaya, gearship na pwede mong itawag dito. Final gearship was whew, the final scene. Bakit mo tinawag na gearship? Eh, simple lang. Eh, nakita-kita yung tatlong... Yung tatlong paksyo tal- na talagang humahabo sa mga shards na to eh. So, it's now official. It's a three-way fight for the shards. It further complicates the storyline. <laughs> Kaya, gear shift ito. So, these three gear shifts that I saw, hmm, all of them. The second and the... Take two. The second and the third will play a role down the line in this anime. Tandaan nyo. Uh, we're almost at the halfway point of this uh, this anime's run. Plot lies. Malinis. Because well, the uh, the plot of this episode ties in with the pacing. Kung kung ang pacing yon ay tense, tapos bigla nyo ilalagyan ng ng backgrounder of of uh, of any kind, sira e. Eh. sira ang plot ng episode na to. Parang binaliwala mo ang 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 pacing. Ang ganda ng pacing. Eh. So, kaya man, kaya, you really need uh, a plot this clean to make the audience understand na ganito ka pacing, na ganito ka tense yung pacing, at yung well, every scene in this episode is a gear shift. I just had to <laughs> I just had to cite three of my own. So pace, flow, and plot they all came together for this episode. And wow. It's the very first time I reviewed an uh, an anime episode outside of my home. Stand off na naman eh. So Tesla Note episode 6 Because of the final scene, talagang kapanapanabik na ang next episode ng Tesla Note. Dahil talagang uh, nagparangdam na a small house. Eh. So, tatlo na silang group <laughs> nag-aagawan sa shards. Right now, a small house has two shards under their control. So, kailangan... Uh, mabawi ng Japan City ang isa sa kanila. Kailangan din bawi. Well, as much as possible, gusto ng CIA na bawiin pareho. It's gonna be one, it's probably gonna be one hell of an episode in the next one. So again, Tesla Note, episode 6. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this great spy anime mga So what do we do? Of course, the drill. We wait for next week and watch that episode. So in the meantime, mga lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Or if you're on Patreon, enjoy the next review I'm going to upload. <laughs> First story ay ganito. Meron biglang... Bumarge in sa opisina uh, asking for help. His name is Adam. Vampire siya. Excuse me. So, nagpapatago siya kila kaya Ronaldo at Dralo. Ang sin, ang sin, just pa ni Ronaldo. Sige. Doon tayo sa bubungan magdago. So, they did. Ngayon, in came this very, very fat girl named Maremi Gekoin. She's looking for Adam. At ang parati niya sinasabi, 
bite me. <laughs> Dralong found it so disturbing that he turned to ash again. <laughs> so, uh, nagkwento na si Adam. Two months ago, um, uh, he was hungry as fuck uh, going going around Shinyo Kohama to, uh, syempre, uh, looking for a victim. Meron siya nakitang uh, napaka-cute na girl and uh, tinawag niya, uh, Miss, ang cute nyo? Pwede ba kitang, uh, pwede ba, pwede ba kitang matreat sa merienda? Parang gano'n. Gano'n, 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 Inakala ni Maremi na siya ang tinatawag ni Adam. So, oh, are you hitting on me? So, so well, nagpakilala ka agad. Ay, Maremi ka ko. Can we trade? Uh, can we trade social media accounts? <laughs> so, nagtatakbo na si Adam and the chase started right there. I don't know why I find that disturbing. <laughs> I feel sorry for this vampire. Eventually, Uh, pumayag na sila Dralok at uh, Ronaldo na tulungan ito. Uh, makatakas! So, uh, sinabi niya, okay. Sige, doon tayo pumunta sa ano, para uh, ang lapas mo, doon na sa kabilang floor. Doon sa sa upper floor. Pumayag na si Adam. So, ayun na. Akira sila. Uh, but, sabi ni Ronaldo, okay, coast is clear. So, lapas na sila. Okay, sabi niya, but, tatalawin bilang utang na loob ni Adam ito. But suddenly, Maremi shows up! Ayun, sila wala na. Wala na sa takas. So, nagtatakbo nung si Adam. Then, he, um, sinabi niya, oh, dead end, teka. Tapos biglang may lumabas sa, lumabas sa escape shoot. Eh, siguro, baka na nila, ano yun? Baka na nila, nila, Ronaldo Tralok yun. So, gumanon. So, he went down the shoot and so was Maremi. Then, uh, okay, coast is clear. So, Takbo pa rin si Adam. As he was about to get, uh, tatawin na siya kasi ng kalye. He was about to get hit by the truck. Tinulak siya ni Maremi. So, ang nasagasaan si Maremi. Siya ang nabundol ng truck na to. So, well, everyone was in shock. Okay, especially the driver. So, ayun, uh, with Ronaldo and Dralok as witnesses, eh, sabi, well, nagkaroon ng konting awa si Adam. Sinabi niya, Uy, ako naman ginawa yun. Hindi pa naman kailangan eh. Uh, well, his point is he's a vampire. Kahit banggay siya ng ilang beses, hindi pa rin siya mamamatay. So, eh, ang, sina- ang naging dahilan lang ni uh, Maremi that it's okay. Um, I was happy chasing you. Confirmed. Ang sama ng tama ng tabatsay na to kay Adam. So, Uh, out of probably out of despair um, he felt accountable for what happened to Maremi Adam bites Maremi right here in the neck and all of a sudden po po naging vampire na si Maremi and well hindi hindi lang vampire na yung talagang biting may pakpak pa <laughs> Talaga, wow! Naging OP na vampire. Eh, siguro, uh, out of what, siguro, as a result of what he did, nightlove na rin si Adam sa kanya. So, sige, sige, halika na. Sama na ako may love. Parang gano'n na, <laughs> gano'n na sabi. So, Maremi took Adam away and probably a few days later, bumalik si Adam sa office nila nila Ronaldo Dralo of course thanking them and he's looking he wants to he wants them to recommend him to recommend to him some uh, vampire friendly gyms kasi gusto niyang gusto niyang magpalakas para maging equal niya si Maremi e sinabi, sinabi na lang ni ni Ronaldo go home <laughs> <laughs> Grabe. The second and third stories are ano eh, uh, halatang uh, magkasama eh. Now, the second story now, we now deal with Dralok's family. Kasi, inimbitahan si Dralok ng kanyang ama sa isang well, family reunion. Eh, 
ang live na nalalayo na raw si Dralo sa talagang homeland ng mga na, ng mga Dralo. So, eh sinabi na lang ng tatay niya, eh ilalapit namin sa yo family reunion. We'll rent out the uh, the hotel, the Prince Hotel. Pi- Ito ang pinakamahal na hotel sa buong Shinjo Kohama. So, yep. The family rented out the top two flo- top two floors. Ni rentahan nila. And they even invited Ronaldo over. Hindi pa ganong kakilala ng pamilya ni Dralok si Ronaldo. So, um, kumbaga, win arm up story <laughs> na ni Dralok si Ronaldo sa pamilya niya. So, pagdating nila doon, akala nila, pole dancer si Ronaldo. <laughs> Sabi nga ni Ronaldo, papatay ko yung punyetang dalo na yan. <laughs> lalo, lalo kong i-enjoy ng pagpatay dyan. <laughs> Grabe. Eventually, we found out um, the name of Dralok's father here. His name is Draus. And Dralok has an aunt named uh, Gorgona na na nagpakilala naman kay Ronaldo. Ang sinabi na lang ni Ronaldo na pangalan niya, Paul McCartney. <laughs> Tanga na ginamit pa yung isang member, pangalan ng isang member ng Beatles yun, ginamit mo pa, walang yaka. So, it, it just for the complicated thing. Pinakilala na, so, ikasiguro ni, ni Ronaldo, pinakilala na ako bilang Paul Dancer ng, ng mukong kasama. Okay, right on na lang ako. Then, uh, several moments later, dumating na ang lolo ni Dralok. The head, uh, no, the patriarch of the family, si Progenitor. Talagang, he is fucking huge! Okay? Talagang masasabi mong vampire ito. In every sense of the word, uh, uh, kaysa ang gulo mo siya tignan, talagang vampire ang itsura niya. <laughs> Talaga vampire lord certified. Uh, well, well, Ronaldo was. Well, Ronaldo looks scared. Okay, it's the first time I saw him look look this scared for a vampire. So, eh, siyempre, napakilala siya. Uh, I'm Paul. Ah, sinabi ng lolo. So you're uh, so you're my grandson's friend, huh? Nice to meet you. Here's my QR code. Connect with me on social media. <laughs> Hindi lang pala up to date sa technology ang 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 vampire lord na to. Eh gusto niya talaga makipagkaibigan din kay Ronaldo. Now that we know how uh, how intimidating uh, progenitor is, he also has this fetish of thinking uh thinking of um weird parlor games for the family reunion. Eh yung mga iba niyang Kamiembro ng pamilya, even his own kids, yung mga, yung mga, yung tatay at saka yung auntie ni Dralok, eh, siya na, may, siya na mismo pumibigil, wag na, wag na dad, please, wag na. As a friend, Dralok gives Ronaldo the heads up on how, uh, on how dangerous his grandfather's fetish is. Kung silang mga vampire, eh, they find it dangerous Malawang sa human talaga, baka ikamatay pa ni, baka ikamatay pa ni Ronaldo ito. Luckily, um, parang, parang uh, oversized board game ang naisip ni Progenitor for this family reunion. So, apaka. Kung ano yung apaka, dice roll, syempre, malaking dice. Oh, walk the number of squares that dice will, uh, that dice will call out. So, kung ano yung natapaka mong square, tanggalin mo yon at sundan mo yung instruction sa ilalim. Oh, sabi ni Ronaldo, okay, sounds easy. Eh, nakita naman, nung sinample na ni, mismo ni Progenitor, yung, yung, on how the, on how this, this huge board game works, okay, three. Napaka niya. Tinanggal niya yung square. Nakalagay landmine, o di na sabugan siya. So, sabi lang, sabi ni Ronaldo, <laughs> Patay! Kung tao yun, sigurado patay na yun. Eh, this is a vampire lord ko. Talagang, uh, talagang may immortality factor to kaya baliwala sa kanya. Laro. At 
at one point it was really funny kasi yung tinapakang square ni Ronaldo it ordered him to wear to wear a bunny suit <laughs> kaya lalo siyang nag uh, lalo siyang nagmukhang Becky but eventually he won the board game si uh, si Ronaldo but not without the assist from John kasi medyo uh, ginulo ni John yung galaw ng dice in such a way na ang lalabas 5 uh, Ronaldo only needs 5 squares to win the game kasi meron nakalagay merong square doon na nakalagay goal so once you step on that the game should be over you're the winner yun nga nangyari pero ang gusto mangyari ni Progenitor tapusin lahat ng kasali yung game e eh, nagmamakaawa na yung mga ibang uh, yung mga ibang kapamilya niya so tigitigaw mo muna may, may winner ni Bata pa pala din itutuloy oh so eventually the head of the family gave in his parting shots to um to Dralok well this is actually the this is actually the final scene we can now count it as a final scene of the episode kasi medyo mahaba eh yung story ang ito. Sinabi lang niya kay Dralo, cherish that friend of yours. So, he's referring to, Rina- to Ronaldo. But before that, Dralo's entire family pala has already read the Ronaldo Chronicles. Instead of um, getting pissed off at Ronaldo, they are impressed with him. Ilan lang na yung, yung tatay ni Dralo, si Draus. He was so moved by Um, part 1 of the Chronicles kasi nagkaroon tuloy ng kaibigan ang kanyang weakling na anak so much as to they have decided to to hunt down their evil compatriots so that means well uh, Jarlok's family are Jarlok's family is a good one uh, they're they're composed of good vampires na hindi lang basta-basta makangagat para lang para lang makatikin ng dugo parang ganun yan eh so the final scene was Uh, really moving. If we haven't broken this down yet, let's break it down right, ARD style. <clears throat> ah, stretching muna. Okay. Pace. As in a multiple story episode, um, the pacing was never boring. Kasi, the first story was, um, was rather slow kasi Uh, Maremi was on the prowl for Adam. So, the pace was slow and excruciating. So, talagang, uh, you would actually root for Adam here kasi, abay, gar- garito kalaking babae na stalker. Abay, abay kahit matinong vampire, matatakot dito eh. Diyos ko. So, the pacing will make you realize this for the first story. Adam was in fear for his life actually although he is a vampire he's he's in fear for his life because of this girl kasi if you if you've seen the episode talaga nakakatakot ang itsura ng babae mataba malaki and very motivated to have him as a boyfriend <laughs> but in the end yeah, talaga natawa ka rin eh so Now, the pacing suddenly switched to the second story. Which was medyo mabilis. Kasi, uh, although it was a two-part story, medyo mabilis yung pacing. Dahil, the viewers, well, um, siguro according to Madhouse, the viewers need to pay close attention to Dralok's family on how, uh, how, he, how he's being treated here. on how well when it comes to power um how does he fare up to his own family members well we cannot safely conclude that nope Dralok is the weakest <laughs> definitely the pacing will also make you realize this despite um some of them having uh, some of them being op vampires hindi nila ginagamit ito sa kasamaan or for their own greed no Sabi nga ni Dralok kanine. Well, if they read the Chronicles and they find out that uh, Castle Dralok is no more, okay. hindi naman sila 
hindi, hindi ka naman nila hindi ka naman nila papatayin or bubugbugin man lang they might sue you <laughs> so ganon so hanggang ganon lang ang ang kumbaga uh, what's it called this more likely na retaliation sa kanya ng family niya so that means uh, talagang there's, they still resort to legal means talagang sumusunod sa uh, they are law abiding citizens all of them kaya yun ang marireal yun ang marirealize mo dahil sa pacing So, no complaints about the pacing. Talagang, it made me feel that it, it, it is, it is, it, I'm, I'm up for another funny episode. Flo naman. Well, biggest gear shift I saw in the first story was yung death scene. Yan, yung kay Maremi. Uh, that, well, kahit siguro, familiar na siya na hindi mamamatay ito kasi vampire ito. But she still she still saved Adam from that truck at siya ang nabundol. Eh, yeah, sabi nga ni Adam, you didn't have to do that! So, pero ginawa pa rin niya. What does this gear shift tell you? Simple lang. Anyone can fall in love with a vampire. Whether it be uh, induced or or this pure. So, Simple lang kung bakit ko tinawag na gear shift to. Kasi, kakaibang gear shift eh. Kakaibang eksena. Eh, there's a romantic feel to it. Dahil, well, Adam has been, uh, uh, has been avoiding this girl for the past two months. And, and talagang, hindi niya feel yung babaeng ito. Yung kasama niya, ang feel niya. Pero si Maremi naman, um, nakita niya, uy, ang guwapo. So, eventually, in those two months na alaman niya na vampire ito, eh, siguro, lalo siya, na, lalo siya na in love dito. In order for, uh, in order for her to be with Adam, siguro, she needs to become a vampire. She needs to become a vampire. Kaya, magpapaka, magpapakagat siya talaga. Sila sabi niya, Bite me! <laughs> it's, it's really disturbing the way she delivers that, uh, uh, that line. <laughs> So, that's why I call it the gear shift. Dahil yung pinaghuhugutan niya, talagang totoo ang pag-ibig niya kay Adam. It's quite... Um, ngayon na pinag-usapan ito eh, dito sa anime na to. Yung the love angle between a human and a vampire. So, talagang in-expound nila dito sa gear shift na to. Now, biggest gear shift of the second story, which is a two-part one eh. We're in, yeah, I can say, the final scene. Kasi, progenitor is, um, is not an abusive vampire. Okay? Hindi siya abusive na vampire lord. Let's be, spe- let's be specific on that. Kasi, um, na-appreciate niya yung, uh, yung pagkakaibigan ng apo niya at saka ni Ronaldo. Because, well, here's how I deep dive into that one. Sinabi kasi ng progenitor kay Dralok na to cherish Ronaldo's friendship. I think I know why. Because he is well aware that his, well, probably his family is the only family of good vampires. He knows very well that hindi lahat ng vampire ay kasing kasing bait nila. Kasing bali, kasing bait ng pamilya niya. There are vampires out there who will uh, who will uh, use their powers to 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 kill humans just for their blood or to dominate them. Yun ang talagang mga evil. So probably um, he wants uh Uh, Ronaldo and Dralok to stay friends kasi Ronaldo and then, Dralok really needs Ronaldo because Progenitor knows how weak Dralok is so yeah he needs Ronaldo in his life yeah. vampire hunter si, Rina- si Ronaldo we all know that he knows how to uh, how to take down a vampire especially an evil one 
So, sana yan. Jalok needs Ronaldo's protection right now. Kaya, ganun ang pagkakasabi niya. So, that's why I call it a gearship. Na deep dive ko. Sabi ko, uy, deep dive material ang anong to ah. Sige, itong gearship na to. Itong uh, gearship dito. So, these two gearships that I saw, the last one will play a role down the line in prob- probably in the second half of this anime's run. Tandaan nyo, mga ka-lifestyle, episode 6 na to. We're done practically with the first half of its run. Plot-wise, planchado. Although, there was a, um, there was a fast transition, and there was a, um, uh, the transition between stories was really pronounced. Hindi, um, totally meshed yung dalawang story ang ito. Talagang, masasabi mo na dalawang magkaibang story ito. Am I complaining? Nope. It's still well ironed out. Dahil, May definite ending yung yung unang storya and of course the second which is actually a two-part one. Definite din ang ending nun. Eh, happy ending, pareho. So, you feel satisfied for um, for Ronaldo and Dralok that uh, they went to they went through these kinds of um, adventures together. So, dagdag na naman yung sa Ronaldo, Con- Ro- Ronaldo Chronicles Part 3 ni Ronaldo. Well ironed out in plot. So pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. So another two zany stories from this anime. It ended on a lighter but not boring note. Let's be specific about that. So the vampire dies in no time episode six. Easy pa Ganda nga eh. Oh, two thumbs up. Maganda yung ano eh, uh, talagang maganda yung second story eh. Although, pinalabas silang two part one kasi they had to they had to cut the story in two kasi syempre for para ma yung mga advertisers nung, nung magpapalabas ito. Maganda yung story eh, ng, ng pangalawa kasi we got to meet Dralok's family. Who are, well, although they are vampires, they are law-abiding citizens also. So, hindi na sila maglilipa na sa gabi para, para mga agat. Para lang, para lang uminom ng dugo. No. Uh, they, 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 they still follow the law of, they still follow the laws of men. Yun ang mainam sa kanila. And they really appreciate Ronaldo's um, uh, efforts to... To, to keep Dralok by his side. And of course, according to Progenitor, Dralok also needs Ronaldo's protection. Kasi maraming ang, maraming ang masasamang vampire out there. And Dralok, uh, given his powers, he cannot handle them. So he needs Ronaldo. That's what the second story of this episode will tell you. Kaya... If I were Ronaldo, I would I would think of it this way. Not only do I have Dralok as um, as a partner in my adventures, I now have the backing of his entire family. Na talaga hamak na malalakas pa sa kanya. So if ever I need help, I can ask for it from them. Ganon ang dapat mindset kayo ni Ronaldo. So again. The Vampire Dies in No Time, Episode 6. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up from this zany anime, mga ka-lifestyle. Ah, enjoy ako. Enjoy ako talaga. So what do we do now, mga ka-lifestyle? Patreon. We do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. For Patreon, abangan nyo na lang yung susunod kong upload, alright? But in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Well, the episode started um, Rundown na to, ha? With um, Shigure inab- 
naabutan si Kobato na, na nagdo-drawing ng wow okay? um, anime art alright so eh we saw in this uh, in this particular in, in this uh, in the opening scene na off missions means na naka so call this nagkakailangan sila Shigure at Kobato but um it finally reared its ugly head during a mission hindi nagkaintindihan sila Kobato at Shigure kung sequential silang um paparel dun sa target or sabay nauna si si Shigure but um, they eventually took the uh, the, the cultist out kasi cultist ang target nila rito medyo na alarma si Leslie of course uh, he's the ex he's their XO so kinosa niya si Shigure eh yun nga nalaman mo well, naramdaman niya na um Shigure has no problem talking to si- Sumire their sanity anchor pero pagdating kay Kobato yung one-on-one talk hindi niya kayang gawin napansin din yun nila Sumire at Larry so in-approach din nila ang uh, si Leslie about it and well, Leslie just told them that he is fully aware and so after uh, after some pondering sab- sab- silang tatlo they decided to hatch a plan para me- para medyo maging close yung dalawa They um, they're gonna do it through a barbecue welcome party for Shigure. So nag-organize sila. Si oh they were out on they were out in in the city. In assign ni Leslie uh, y- yung mga gagawin nila para uh, mabilis sila ma-organize ang party na to. So si Leslie, si Sumire and Larry ang bibili ng grill at yung mga pinapaluto. Uh, uling uh, probably utensils syempre si Shigure naman at si Kobato inassign ni Leslie na bumili ng yung ilulutong pagkain Leslie even told them that it's an order so what? Well, no choice sila dalawa okay uh, tinuro pa nga ni Leslie kung saan sila dapat bumili sa parang parang isang malaking ano to, isang malaking supermarket sa city o yan dyan kayo bumili Pabalikan namin kayo, ha? So, namili sila. Then, eventually, they started, they, they started talking to each other kung ano ang dapat bilin at kung ano ang hindi dapat bilin. Or, at saka kung gano'ng karami yung bibili nila. And, syempre, medyo, uh, medyo stressful kasi ang dami. Ang dami, ang dami binili. So, siguro took a break by um, going to this particular vending machine that, um, that uh that sells drinks cold drinks so habang hindi, hindi siya maka-decide ko nung kukunin niya eh. then pag sabi na pag sabi niya ko nung orderin niya may sumabay sa kanya na bo- boses ng batang babae tingin niya ganun sinadya but kasi kasi siguro ang ginagawa ng batang to rito so what Si nabi na lang ni Nadia na uh, tumawag si Hayden uh, yeah, it's supposedly Hayden tumawag sa kanya o, over the phone right there and then eh siguro pinatutumba na sa kanya yun she unleashes she unleashes her two killer rabbits so the chase is on eh naabutan ni Kobo to si Shiguri na tumatakbo uh, nakita niya kung anong uh, anong Uh, ang humahabol kay Shigure. Oy, teka, sige. So, tapo muna sila. Then, they found a way to um, to somewhat stand their ground and, yeah, they, co- they completely took out these two rabbits. Eh, syempre, medyo sumama ang loob ni Nadia dahil itong dalawa niyang alaga eh. The moment that Nadia told Shigure and Kobato that they're going to pay for that, may lumabas na scarred. So, nagtaka yung dalawa. So, takbo! <laughs> Then, uh, they got trapped. Ah, si Kobato and Shigure, 
they got trapped in this um uh, in this emergency staircase kasi nga parang building eh. At yon uh, nagkasabihan kung bakit na uh, naiilang ang Uh, naiilang sila sa isa't isa. They both found out that they're um, they're both otakus. Okay? Hindi weebs, ha? Mind you. Otakus. Uh, they are their true blue anime fans. Ang sabi naman ni uh, ni Shigure, Alright. Let's take this thing out. Kasi guro ni Shigure, bakit natin kung unarmed tayo? May trade naman tayo. Lika, sige. So, kumpahin natin yan. So, they, they thought of a plan to, um, to neutralize this uh, scarred. But, using whatever, whatever practically they bought, yeah, they were able to take out this scarred. <laughs> Yung mga gamit nila, fireworks, at saka yung mga binamili nila pagkain. Uh, they were creative. So, um, they eventually uh, were successful in holding a barbecue welcome party for Shigure. Pero si Shigure yung nagluluto sa grill. Then, eh, uh, while he was cooking, so, in-approach siya ni Koba to, and right there and then, na, nagsab- nagsab- nagsabihan sila ng mga pag-aalinlangan nila sa isa't isa. Kasi, eto pa lang si Shigure, he was, um, he was so ashamed to, to, to talk to Koba to, because, She is a really good artist. Ang galing mag-drawing. Kasi, parang um, ibang level yung pag- kanyang pagiging anime fan, si Kobato. Uh, he's just uh, he's just a watcher. Eh, sabi naman ni Kobato, kaya rin siya naiilang na makipag-usap basically kay Shigure. It's because that his um his drive and his goal to become a hero parang again uh, um, she feels small kumaga ibang iba yung level ng motivation ni Shigure yun yung uh, reason kung bakit minsan na uh, nag-aalinlangan siya makipag-usap kay Shigure on a, on a personal level so yun nagkaamin nagka sabihan na and what sabi ni Shigure Let's not worry about that. <laughs> so, something to that effect. Much to the other's um, approval. Kasi may nagkaka... Nag, nag-uusap na yung dalawa. Lalo na si Leslie. Final scene. Well, someone tipped off Nadia on uh, when the when the assassination of when uh, the sleeper's assassination of LC will go down. Uh, sabi ng uh, ng ispiyang ito, it's gonna go down in two weeks. So, well, right there and then, we can say na natimbrian na si Hayden. Kasi, um, well, alaga niya itong si, ano eh, si Nadia. Mm. I think business is about to pick up in this anime. Hmm. So let's break this down ARD style. Pace. This anime is now becoming really good at mixing fast and slow pacing wise. Um Kasi maraming issues ang dapat i-resolve ba ng 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 mga lead characters sa isa't isa. And they're, uh, they're doing us and Silver Link is doing a swell job in Yeah, in telling us this. Ngayon, eh, may issue pala between uh, Kobato and Shigure. Ngayon lang natin na, uh, ngayon lang talaga na, na front and center ng issue na to. Because, well, they're, they're sleepers. They're a sleeper team. Kaya, sila kasi ang, ang rear support ng, ng team na to. If they don't start talking to each other, as often as they can uh, the, uh, the next mission they go to uh, baka malagay sa alanganin ng buong team muntik na nga rito eh uh, in the mission that was um, 
uh, we saw here in this episode, muntik na rin dito. Eh, pinangunahan ka agad ni siguro si Koba to, eh, may sinasabi pa. So, yeah. Communication is important. Kaya, um, I think Leslie made the right call here. This is what the pacing will make you realize. Na, may issues pala between Kobato and Shigure na, nako, pwedeng, na talagang pwedeng, uh, if they don't solve this, they will, they will carry this one over to the next mission. Kaya, mabuti naman. At na, uh, nag-uusap na sila ni sila Kobato at Shigure sa isa't isa. It's very important. Talagang, uh, it's an all-important uh, part of the storyline. Kaya, no complaints about the pacing. Maganda yung mix ng fast and slow. First gear shift was when um, the mission itself, yung, yung mission scene nila. Pinangunahan agad ni Shigure si Kobato. Eh, meron bang Eh, meron pang sinasabi. So, why did I call this a gear shift? Well, simple. Nakita problema. So, nakita agad ni, ni Leslie na may problema ang dalawang to. And, ikaw yung siguro, if this happens again, one of us may die. <laughs> baka, baka may mamatay yung isa sa amin. So, he, so, Talagang in the following scene, uh, kinusot niya si Shigure. So, sabi niya, basically, what's wrong? Uh, ba't di ka, naki- ba't di ka uh, nakikipag-usap na madalas kay Koba to? E eh, kayong dalawa ang rear support namin. Kumbaga, backline. Parang God's Unchained, you know? <laughs> yeah, back, it's, it's, that's why it's called the backline kasi ikaw ang bumaba up sa... sa talagang sa unang sumasabak sa kalaban. That's why you're called the back line. Kung ganitong, uh, kung may communication gap talaga ang back line mo, definitely, someone is going to die. <laughs> Kaya, uh, and, um, it's not going to be caused by the enemy. So, this is what this gear ship will make. Kaya ako tinawag na gear ship ito. Dahil, crucial. One mistake. Yeah. If you're a, if you're in a sleeper team, one mistake by one of your members can cost you the mission or someone's life. That's what this gear ship made me realize. Second gear ship was when the three, si um, Leslie, Larry, at si Sumire, they um, they all they finally figured out a plan on how to um, how to bring these two. even closer. And dumi pa nga ng isip ni Leslie. Akala niya, meron na mumuong romansa sa dalaw eh. Ay, nako, umira na naman ang pagkabiki nito. So, why did I call this a gear ship? Again, talagang, um, whether they're on a mission or not, they function as a team. Kung meron problema ang isa, talagang, they will, they're going to, um, they're going to put their heads together to, um, to help uh, to help solve this problem. Kaya um, off duty on duty or off duty talagang talagang isang grupo sila, isang team. In short, Leslie is a really good leader. This is what this gear ship will make you see. Final gear ship was what? I don't know kasi the final scene Uh, somewhat bothers me right now because sino ba itong uh, sino ba itong naglalaglag kila kila Leslie baka niya sinasabi dito kay Nadia eh si Nadia ang alaga ni ano eh alaga ni Hayden na kalaban well, you've seen how Hayden is being treated by his boss konti pagkakamali na bubugbugin na siya <laughs> just goes to show you ang amo niya ay isang tarantadong politiko. And because of this gear shift, mukhang, um, there's a power struggle going on. Dahil, um, 
if you would um factor in all the um all uh all instances of of the anime so far palariko that um the spy who is divulging information to Nadia is the one actually designing the gun that Shigure will use to assassinate LC. Palagay ko ito eh. Dahil, um, every time na dumadalo sa kanya si Vera, ang daming tanong eh. Parang, parang, nanghinala na nga ako kanina eh. So, ang daming tanong naman ng 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 mukong na to. Ano ba concern mo? You're, you're just you just been commissioned to make this weapon. You're no position to to ask questions like that. Ito naman si Ito naman si Vera napaka-accommodating. So That's what this gearship is trying to tell me. Meron nang naglalaglag sa sa Vera Platoon. So if this Um, if this spy doesn't get um, uh, doesn't get burned, malamang the um, the assass the uh, the assassination job won't go so well. It's not going to it's not going to end well for possibly for uh, for the sleepers. Kung talagang pero they really need to establish. Uh, a premise as to why they should kill LC. Kasi right now, well, hindi pa sure si Shiguri kung magagawa niya. Kasi, bulilit lang to eh. Bata. And, kasi save lang nila ni Larry dito. So, um, why would you assassinate a child as innocent as this? I- yun ang hindi mag-guess ni Shiguri. Habang ang pawang katotohanan ay hindi lumalabas dito, tuloy pa rin ang laglagan. That's what this gearshit is also trying to tell me. So these three gearshits that I saw, um, the last one, if it doesn't um, play a role in the next episode, malamang in future episodes. Because, Uh, I fear that um, the job won't end well for Shigure. Dahil sa panlalaglag na ito. Plot-wise, malinis. Because, um, Leslie is um, all caught up on the task at hand. Dahil hindi, na, hindi nga nag-uusap yung dalawang backline niya. Uh, lalo na na pag off duty kasi for him you uh, all of them need to to form strong friendly relationships when they're off duty kasi kung uh, kung magana ang loob ninyo sa isa't isa the mission every mission uh, it be given will be an easy one kasi nag-uusap eh Usap. Now, if you didn't have a plot this clean, hindi mo ma appreciate yung uh, yung leadership ni Leslie. Hindi mo ma appreciate because bigla mo ba lalagyan mo na side story na uh, oy migan ito. Pero lalagyan mo ng backstory na oy ganito si ano nung araw. Di si Rae. Eh. There's a dynamic that needs uh, to be fixed in this episode. Kaya, kailangan mo ng isang malinis na plot. And Silverlink gave that to us. Talagang, uh, talagang in-address ni Leslie ang issue na to. Because he, uh, he is um, fully aware that if there's no communication on the battlefield, every mission they take on from uh, after that may be a failure. Baka may mamantay pa sa kanila. Kaya, yeah, I'm sure, I'm very sure, yun ang iniiwasan ni Leslie. Because he has a solid enough team and, well, they're, they're a gang when they're off duty. So, kumbaga, 
Uh, ni-reveal na nga pala ni Leslie yung ang age niya rito eh. He has already given us a hint. He is um 50 plus. Ganun na siya, ganun na siya katanda. So we can now also assume that Vera is also within the same age range. Kasi parang parang magkay magkaydad sila eh. Sila ni Commander Vera. And um well Leslie feels like um kumbaga even though he's gay. Okay? Uh, he feels like uh, parang parang kuya ate <laughs> sa mga sa mga to kasi talagang ang laki ng bata sa kanya and uh, he he feels uh, the way the way after after five episodes I can see that um, talagang maalaga sa tao si Leslie so he's giving his um, personal touch oh my God, human touch Uh, to his um to his subordinates that's what the plot will make you realize ganon kalinis kasi so base flow and plot they all came together for this episode talagang it's another um issue that has been uh resolved between team members talagang sabi ko sa inyo eh the uh, the personal issues that I have seen here in five episodes pa lang ang dami na It, it totally reminds me of the um, the psychological nature ng anime na to so far. It reminds me talaga of Evangelion. Ganitong ganitong style ng Evangelion. The, when it comes to uh, the psyche, the overall psyche of the anime. So, Deep Insanity, The Lost Child, Episode 5. Deserve. Thumbs up. I don't know why um why people are uh, why anime fans these days are ignoring this anime. I say I've seen some blog posts and um uh well I frequent social media, especially the um the the anime related uh. Discussions, groups, uh, subreddits, and then uh, pina- pinag-uusapan nga nilang Deep Insanity sa Reddit eh. So, that's good. Mas paniniwala ko Reddit kaysa Facebook. <laughs> to tell you the truth, mga kalahis that. Patreon. Sa mga FB groups, wala eh. No one is talking about this anime. Ang palagay kasi ng mga ibang na, ng mga anime bloggers na uh, The anime is not that good. Uh, the yung upisan ng storya is not that good. All stories start slow. You never start a story fast, even in real life. Alam nyo? I'll give you an example of how of. An anime that started slow but ended ended pretty big. Odd Taxi. No spring 2021. It started slow but eventually it built up momentum. The storyline was uh, becoming exciting from episode 4 onwards. Hanggang sa nagfinali. Ganda nga na finale. Maganda kasi when you're uh, when you're telling a story, especially if you're an anime. You need to start things slow enough, but but not too slow, okay? But not too slow. You need to start things slow enough para makakomunit yung mga baguang anime fan and para hindi um, maging disinterested naman ang mga seasoned anime fans. Yung mga katulad ko. You have to keep the... Uh, you have to build it up from there. Kasi kung um, tama lang yung build up kaya, kaya that's why pacing is important. Kung tama yung build up pacing wise will be set up for uh, for a great final three episodes at least. This is the way I see it for this anime. Kumaga, five episodes in they are resolving um, issues on their own from, from within the team. Hindi na nila um, sinasangkot ng kanilang commander, si Fera. 
Talagang within the team lang. Hanggang kay, hanggang kay Leslie lang. So, what does this mean? If someone other than Hayden comes along, they are now mentally and emotionally prepared for it. Because, like in this episode, uh, Komato and Shigure are now starting to communicate in of duty. So, that's important. That's really important. I know one thing for sure on what they're missing out. The deep dive of this anime. They're missing out. So again, Deep Insanity, The Lost Child, Episode 5. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime, Maka Lifestyle. Wow. Talking personal issues, the more the deep dives. So what do we do now? Maka Lifestyle, Patreon. We do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Kaya, in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Or if you're on Patreon, well, enjoy the next review I'm going to upload. So, well, uh, the main protag's life in Mill 2 has begun. Of course, kasama na si Tart. But, he takes a backseat. Kasi, ipinakilala na rito yeah a certain girl named Maha see the spelling uh, she's an enterprising little girl so meron siyang team of uh, sightseers then all of a sudden tinukod lang sila ng mga uh, ng mga kahinahinalang mga lalaki yun pala uh, they were uh, sent to this orphanage that eventually uh, showed its true colors. Putahan pala ito. The owners, well, uh, these guys are engaged in human trafficking. Na mga ganito kabata na babae. So, uh, one by one, they are being um, sold to clients. Dirty clients. Kumaga, when they reach a certain age, I think 12, Ayun, pinagpuputa na sila. Then one day, uh, well, Lou, now known as Ilig Balor, came to the, um, to the orphanage uh, kasi gusto niyang uh, mag-hire ng help para sa kanyang, uh, well, uh, para maging personal servant niya. Of course, well, uh, Tart now stands as his bodyguard. As if he needs one. <laughs> so, well, na uh, out of the uh, out of the girls lined up, he chose Maha. And mukhang ano raw, mukhang matino ito, mukhang mabait. And uh, sa tingin niya, mukhang malinis. So, uh, Ilig told the um, told the owners that he will be back in three days. Pero bayad na. Kumaga, Ilig bought her freedom. But, uh, talagang talantado to mga to eh. Within those three days, they plan to, uh, to sell her off for, of course, as a prostitute. Then, pero, nabasa agad ni, ni Ilig na kailangan niya ng tulong. So, on the night na, 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 ibubugaw siya sa isang uh, sa isang kliyente nila ayun nakialam si Ilig well easy as pie he subdues both uh, both the uh, both their handlers tapos eh, sinaba na niya rito sa mataba na well um, I can easily kill you right here or sue you so what will it be well kumbaga nilaglag na ng matabang ito yung mga iba niyang clientele so final scene ayun inelok na niyang maniraan sa kanila si si Maha and, uh, and Maha views him views him as his as her prince knight in shining armor so to speak so let's break this episode down now ARD style pace well the moment na 
dinukot si ang grupo ni Maha for to that orphanage that's for the pace picked up it was wow from the get go it was slow and excruciating and it became more excruciating nung sinimulan na yung pambubugaw sa kanila unang una si yung oldest si Ifa yung uh, yung matangkad yun ang inuna nila so pinahubad uh, pinaliguan kay Maka then of course inayos uh, idin ang idinamit niya rito yung ginawa nilang damit nun kaya pala sila pinapagawa ng mga ng mga ganitong ka-fancy na damit sila rin pala ang magsusot nito kapag silang ibinugaw na tarantado talaga I really despise these kinds of um, these kinds of um, what you call this yung um, ganitong pag, paglalapas na nga sa pagkababae even in real life even in anime uh, pasensya na mga kalayos na talagang I abhor these kinds of uh, these kinds of criminals they are scumbags so o oh, talagang it big the uh, one by one ibinubugaw na sila it became more excruciating to watch sabi ko sa inyo and uh, well the pacing really picked up nung nakialam na si Ilig talagang uh, became uh, became their avenging angel so to speak he really did a number on these two uh, even uh, even threatening the the fat guy na ma kab kapag hindi mo nilaglag yung mga kliyente mo papatayin kita dito pa lang gagawin kitang isang nanlalamig na bangay <laughs> and well uh, Ilig or Lou uh, he's he's not joking <laughs> well I'm glad the fat guy took him seriously so inilaglag na niya yung clientele niya so <sighs> the pacing really made me feel that this is a crucial episode I'll explain later. Flow naman. Well, first gear shift here was um, was when yeah, was when Maha and her group was uh, was captured by these uh, by these uh, by these scumbags para para i ano sa human trafficking. <laughs> Simple lang mga ka lifestyle Patreon kung bakit ko tinawag na gear shift to. It was a really tough to watch gear shift, and it practically set off the um, uh, the trials and tribulations Maha will experience before joining Lou's team. Ayan yung ano in the pilot. Meron isang babae na ganon ganon na ganon ng suit na hairpin. That was Maha, and we're practically seeing uh, Maha's. Um, disturbing past but uh, before before that she she had she had it easy she was an enterprising girl kasi uh, her late father was a merchant himself kaya siguro ina-apply na lang niya yung natutunan niya sa tatay niya in order to survive the streets of Miltio that's what this gearship will make you realize second gearship was when when they started to uh, to pimp Ifa to their clients so that made the that made the episode even tougher to watch. Kaya ako tinawag na gearship to kasi nakita na ni Maha kung ano ang magiging kapalar nila sa sa orphanage na to. And uh well basically their lives have become a living hell right at that moment. Kaya ako tinawag na gearship to kasi it's a um character development gear shift for the worst for Maha final gear shift was when you know Ilig uh, well had to step in to stop this madness kasi although na well pinagbantaan na ng 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 matabang baboy na to si Maha na wag magsusumbong <laughs> you can't uh, you get this guy's that to Ilig Balor or Lou Tuatade in real life. 
hindi nyo may tatago yan madaling na pick up ni ni Ellie gito so to the rescue siya kay Maka why did I call it a ship? well simply lang here's another potential um, student for Ilig uh, another another person he can uh, share the art of assassination with yan na nakikita ko rito kaya well in the pilot we see that uh, all three of these girls are now part of his assassination team talaga mga mga, mga astig ne so these three gear shifts that I saw either have played a role in this anime so far or will play a role down the line in the second half of the anime's run tandaan nyo hehe <laughs> episode 6 na po ito kaya we are done with the first half of this anime's run plot wise malinis even though it's a um, even though it's a sort of a backstory episode malinis pa rin yung plot kasi ang main continuity ng episode na to nagsimula lahat kay Maka she is the origin of uh, uh, of this continuity kumbaga 2 years na siyang nagsasuffer so eventually uh, their paths uh, uh, kumbaga yung silang dalawa ni ni Iling their paths have finally crossed two years later. Kumbaga, yung yung pagkakadating ni Lu sa Miltiu, yung pagsisimula niya bilang Ilig Balor, happened at the same time Maha and her and her friends got uh, got kidnapped for human trafficking. Sabay nagsimula. No, uh, sabay nangyari to. If you can uh, match the uh, the continuity of Ilig to the continuity of Maha, that's what the plot will tell you. Kaya no complaints. Malinis talaga ang pagkakagawa ng plot nato. So pace, flow, and plot—they all came together for this episode. Talaga <laughs> kalunos lunos ang ang pinagdaanan ni ni Mari to bago niya nakilala si Lu aka Ilig so and Satsuki Soko episode 6 The last time I felt uh, this way after uh, a, tough, a tough to watch episode was Higurashi. <laughs> uh, Higurashi Sotsu. Pero talagang, ano eh, you would feel sorry for, for, these, for these girls. And uh, with the way these, uh, these two have been treating them, tapos yung isa talagang, <laughs> talagang ginagawa silang sexual toy. Makes me want to go into the anime and kill him myself. Going some pork chop, going some sisig, going some uh, going some barbecue liempo. Mm. And uh, ako mismo kakain. <laughs> Tala -tala uh, you, you would really hate this guy. Buti na lang, meron tayong uh, meron tayong ilig balor na sumalba sa mga to. Thank God for Lou. <laughs> so again, Ansatsu Kisoko, Episode 6. This is another mic drop. Kaling. the next episode or if you're on patreon you can just wait for my next review of it but 
If not, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Let's run this down as uh, as clearly as I can. So, limang stories to. <laughs> Believe it or not. First one was about uh, Komi taking, uh, trying her hand at um, uh, cracking jokes. Pero, uh, alam naman natin lahat na hindi pa naman siya ganong ka, ka lakas ng loob para magsalita. So, in writing niya ginawa. But, these are dad jokes. So, napansin ni Tada, no? Na, well, we all know that dad jokes are bad. <laughs> so, pinaintindi niya kay Komi na na, well, basically, whatever joke you want to crack, you have to speak it para mas feel ng ibang tao yung joke na yun. So, well, he has a point. Kasi, kaya nga ang dadalda ng mga komedyante. They know how to deliver jokes. Uh, Narealize naman ni Komi na medyo, medyo sablay siya. Ngayon, dumating si, um, dumating si Najimi. May dala joke from Komi. <laughs> Kasi nakapost dun sa, sa labas ng locker niya. So, in-explain ni Tata no, kung ano yung sitwasyon. Um, so, sinabi rin ni Najimi, you got you gotta learn how to speak out the joke in order for uh, in order for other people to feel it. Kasi, yun talaga eh, the delivery. Although, alam ni Tada no, na dad joke, mga dad jokes ito, hindi ganun katawa-tawa. As much as, eh, siguro, ano nila, as much as possible, mag-isip ka na sarili mo. Yan. There was even one point in that story where she tried to, uh, to, to hide from Tada no, para matawagan siya sa cellphone. Doon niya dineliver yung joke. <laughs> Second story was, um, tinatanong ni Najimi kung uh, anong ginagawa ni Komi on her days off. So, sabi lang ni Komi, she never leaves the house. And, kung ano ang mga, ano klase mga damit ang preferred niya. So, basically, Najimi is now questioning Komi's fashion sense. Eh, Komi revealed in this episode that um, lahat ng damit niya, wala siyang, wala siyang binili o pinili man lang dito. Nanay niya ang bumili ng lahat ng to. Sabi ko, Okay. <laughs> so, Najimi decided na isama na si Komi sa mall para, para makapili siya ng sarili niyang damit. So, she drags Tadano along, then she drags Agari along, then while well, they were talking about on how to um, on kung sa mag meet up, kung anong oras, may nakikinig sa kanila. And by the time they got to the mall, we now know who it is kasi sumunod siya, si Yamai. <laughs> Yung designated stalker ni Komi. So, well, she um, tags along for um, for this um, uh, for this fashion trip initiated by uh, by Najimi. Ganito gagawin natin sabi ni Najimi. Magko-contest tayo kung ano ang pinakabagay na damit kay Komi. Ang mapili niya panalo. Okay, pero kailangan ang kondisyon is kailangan under 10,000 yen yung gagastosin ni Komi. Yun lang. Oh, sige, pili na sila. So, eto na. Okay, nasa fitting room na sila. Okay, first uh, first up was uh, Najimi's Choice. Um, Chinese dress na super uh, na super body fit. Talagang kita yung kita, kita, yung, kita yung kaseksiyan ni Komi. So, ika nga ni Tada, no? You only wanted her to dress like that. <laughs> so, mababa lang yun ako. Nakuha ang score ni Najimi. So next was um uh, si Ah, si Yamaina. Komi looks mature in all of these. Ang problema nga lang, above 10,000 yen yung gagastos in. So DQ na siya. <laughs> Disqualified. 
Next was uh, Agari's Choice. Ano ba si Komi? Ano ba naman yan? Eh parang, eh parang nag-time warp si Komi. Gal- parang galing siya 1990s eh. So, they all dubbed it as lame. Mm, low score si, na- low score si Agari. So, eto na. Si ano naman? Si Tadano na. O, binigay na ni Tadano yung mga, yung basket na na kung saan nakalagay yung mga choices niya for Komi. Okay. So, lumabas na si Komi wearing those. Wow! Ooh! Dito talaga sa sa choices ni Tadano nagmukhang teenager si Komi. Talagang as in one piece dress tapos yung yung sapatos pang teenager talaga. So, first time na makita mo si Komi na nakaganito, talagang mapagkaaman na mong teenager. All of them gave it a 10 each. So, ano na ang score ni ano ang score na binigay ni Komi? 10 din. So, panalo si Tada no. Wow, I can't believe uh, we were treated to five stories in this episode. Um, I'm so hyped by this episode. So let's break this down ARD style. Pace. Um, yeah, typical Komi can't communicate pacing kasi, excuse me. So you have to um, show the audience how, um, how fun-filled this episode is. Kasi limang story, ah. The only time the pacing slowed down was during the fourth story. Kasi, um, pinakita ng OLM dito, this is, what I, this is what I think, okay? Pinakita ng OLM dito on, um, on the other consequences this communication disorder does to Komi. Ayun nga. Um, marami siyang bagay na hindi nasabi that day. It was so many. It uh, it made her overthink. Siempre when you when you overthink, you tend uh, not to get some decent sleep. At least, yeah. Nadala niya hanggang sa pagtulog niya. She probably slept late because of that. So you would uh, feel absolutely sorry for the main protag in this particular story. Pero. <laughs> Uh, in the other four, talagang kung talagang babagal all throughout ang pace ng episode, hindi mo ma-appreciate talaga yung funny moments eh. Hindi ganong kalakas ang dating ng mga funny moments ng episode na to. Kaya, I'm totally satisfied with the pacing of this episode. Flow naman! Um, I can only cite, um, uh, Two gear shifts. First one was when um, Komi decided to to pick a winner for the con- that contest na initiate ni na sinimulan ni Najimi. So the winner is Tadano. Nagustuhan niya kasi yung choices ni Tadano para sa kanya. Why do they call it a gear shift? Because if there's anything this gear shift is telling me, it's this. Komi trusts Tadano that much. So much that she's more than willing to let Tadano choose what she what um uh, what she wears. So and uh well she's totally placed her faith in Tadano. So we can say through this gearship na ganong kalalim na ang ang samahan ng dalawang ito. Then it can probably lead to more. Who knows? <laughs> Second gearship and the final one was during the fourth story. Was when she started thinking about those uh, those things that she that she could have said to to some people, pero hindi niya nasabi because she's she was too scared to talk. Kumbaga, um, the, the, well, amini man natin o hindi. You can only put so much in writing and you have to you, ha, you have to write it down really fast 
So, you tend to forget those things na gusto mo talaga sabihin. Nangyayari talaga yon even in real life. So, pinak- ipapakita nga niya, pero uh, kulang. Kulang yung sinabi niya. So, ito rin iniisip niya that night. Why did I call this a gear shift? Wow! It's an eye-opening gear shift, mga ka-lifestyle. We now know how much Komi has been suffering from this disorder. Tandaan nyo, she's been having this communication disorder since she was a kid. Probably six or seven years old. So talagang deep-seated na ang disorder na to sa kanya. And to, um, to have this to um, to have this consequence of overthinking uh, all the things she she could have said that day nakakabalo yun ah the mere thought of it right now kind of makes kind of makes me want to go crazy right now so you can um, so kaya you would feel for Komi in this uh, in this gear shift Talagang eye-opener ang gearship na to. So, these two gearships that I saw, yep, both of them will play a role down the line um, in the second half of this anime's run. Episode 6 na po. 12 episodes lang ang Komi can communicate. Inannounce na. Plot-wise, Pachado. I like the way they transition uh, between the first and then between the between the second and third stories okay kasi the third story showed remnants of the previous one kasi yung nga pinakita yung yung damit ni Komi na pinili para sa kanya ni ano ni Tadano yung winning choice ni Tadano so Ang ganda eh. The way those two stories transitioned, halatang talagang well ironed out ang plot ng episode na to. Uh, just, with, uh, just by observing that transition. Tapos, uh, the transition between... Oh! Uh, the fourth and the fifth. Yun. Maganda rin ang transition nun kasi... Uh, eventually, nakatulog na rin si Komi sa kaiisip. Then, um, the timeline of the fifth story probably happened the, it probably happened the next day. So, maganda rin yung transitioning. Kaya, we can now say it's a well-ironed out plot. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. Nanagang, um, five slice of life type episodes may, may um, marami na namang humor elements and of course uh, that um, that eye-opening fourth story talagang auntie kang puso mo para kay Komi so Komi can communicate episode 6 isip pa ganda nga namang story oh Thumbs up! Excuse me. Although it's a five-story episode, hindi siya, ano eh, hindi siya, hindi siya, what you call this? Uh, sobrang bilis ang, ang, uh, ang pagkakakwento. Kaya sinabi ko kanina, the pacing is, um, all this uh, I'm very I'm very much satisfied with the pacing kasi um, the mere presence of that communication disorder meron kang ano eh talagang maawa ka kay Komi hindi ka lang magagandahan kay Komi maawa ka pa because of her because of her condition and buti na lang uh, she has friends like of course Tadano Najimi Agari and to some degree, si, uh, si Yamai. So, <laughs> with friends like this, uh, 
yeah in the case of Komi it uh, it's um it alleviates the communication disorder yeah na prove nila na prove apat na yun dito especially in the um in the in the second story talaga wow uh, rayot yun <laughs> so again Komi can communicate episode 6 Thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime, Maka Lifestyle. Kaling. Kaling. So what do we do now, Maka Lifestyle? Patreon, we wait for next week and watch the next episode. It's the drill, diba? So, well, if you're on Patreon, just wait for the next upload I'm going to do. But if you're uh, exclusively on YouTube, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Continue ang ang uh, backstory ng love story nila nila Yo at Ana. Umpisa pa lang ng episode uh, ang una nakalata si Matamune. Then uh, ipinahiwatig na ma- ni Matamune na ang Kyo mismo. Then eventually uh kinumpronta ni Yo si Ana uh, regarding this. Then all of a sudden this this uh, super huge demon uh, comes in between him and Anna. So that huge demon starts attacking. So he grabs the sword the uh, uh, the shop owner held. Ayun. Kinumpronta niya mismo yung demon. Sina- sinabi na niya kay Anna, umuwi ka na sa atin at um, magpasaklolo ka kay Matamune. Call Matamune. Eh, nung pag Nung pagsabi ni Ana ng pangalan ni Yo, biglang nawala yung demon. So, so nagtaka na naman si Yo. Ano to? Nakiusap ang lola ni Yo kay, Ma- kay Matamuni na tulungan si Yo na um, what you call this? Na gawa ng paraan si Ana. Because Ana was how 500 years ago yung demeanor niya at saka yung level of uh, yung kumbaga yung yung power level so to speak gano na gano kay how 500 years ago kaya kailangan uh, matulungan nilang dalawa ni Yo ito si Ana so, wow uh, final scene of course Sinabi na lang ni Matamune. Uh, something to this effect. It's about time I um, dry up my tears and help whatever I can. To be continued. <laughs> so let's break this down ARD style. And there. Pace. I could not say there was a build up. Pero, it started out slow eh. Kumbaga, Yo is really trying to figure out Ana. Uh, well, kasi minsan, uh, at that time, medyo nakakabastos na siyang, medyo bastos na siyang kausap. At yung, ngayon, inutusan siya ng lola ni Yo na mamili. After several hours, doon pa lang, doon lang babalik. At ilalaglag na lang doon sa kwarto nila yung, yung mga pinamili niya. Well, which uh, na offense si Yo kasi uh, to him, abay, binastos mo lola ko. Di ba na ako? Kaya ka muna, oy, mag-usap muna tayo. Oy, babae, di ka, mag-usap muna tayo. But, tinigilan siya agad ang lola niya. Uh, his grandmother gave him a stern warning. Words mean nothing to Anna. So, well, uh, siyempre, bilang masunuring apo, sinunod niya ang lola niya. Right there, uh, I couldn't say it was uh, uh, the pace picked up. Kasi talagang natural na pacing lang eh. It's neither fast nor slow. Kumaga, uh, nag-asal bastos dito si Ana. Because of uh, what she doesn't want to do. Something to that effect. Then the pace picked up nung... Nung kinumpronta na ni, ni 
ni Yo si Ana doon sa souvenir shop. That's the only time when the pace picked up. And medyo nagkaroon ng sanity sa pacing. Nung nag nagsimula nang magkwento si Matamune about his past to to Yo's grandmother. So yun nga. Now, the quality of the pacing okay lang. For a backstory episode, ito lang ito ang uh, ang eksaktong pacing para sa isang episode na ganito. Backstory. It doesn't uh, it did not um Did not give emphasis actually to the storyline. Basta, going through the motions type of pacing. So, tama-tama lang kasi backstory. Tandaan nyo, we're still in a backstory, um, we're still in a backstory arc. So, ganitong pacing ang dapat. Flow naman. First gear shift was when uh, nag-uusap-usap sila Yo, Matamune, at ang lola niya. Uh, naramdaman nilang tatlo na parating na si Ana Ngayon lang, darat, ngayon lang darating Kasi may, in, may inutusa kasi sa kanya si yung, yung lola ni Yo Yun nga Binagsak na lang yung pinamili at umalis na Okay, yeah uh, that would, uh, In any culture, that's an act of rudeness <laughs> Take that to any culture, they'll say that that's rude Bastos yun So, well uh, Yo Really took exception to that. So, pero, uh, haabulin na niya sana si Ana. Pero, yun nga, like I said a while ago, pinigilan siya ng kanyang lola. He let it slide, but, the, but due to, um, due to the, what you call this, yung pag-uusap nila ni, ni Matamune, eh, lalo siya na-motivate na talagang kausapin face-to-face si Ana. Now, why did I tell, why, Why did I say this is a gear shift? You can say that um um this was the actual start of uh their of Yo's relationship with Ana. Kasi formal na siyang ipakikilala ng lola ni Yo kay Yo mismo. That uh in that scene. Pero what did she do? Mm. Um Nilaglag na lang yung mga pinamili niya at umalis na lang. Bumalik na lang sa kwarto niya. Na-turn off si Yo kasi... Okay, eh, bastos pa ng babae ito eh. Ba- ba't ko pakakasalan yan, di ba? So, if you look back at this gear shift, later on uh, in the, the souvenir shop scene, sinabi ni Anne, huwag ka, ka nang lumapit sa akin, Yo. Baka kamatay mo. Something to the effect sinabi niyo sa souvenir shop scene. Now, it's a crucial gear shift. Kasi, dito na nagsimulang intindihin ni Yo si Ana as a, as a person. So, nalaman din niya yung problema nito, yung pinaghuhugutan nito. But he is yet to um, find, uh, well, figure out a plan on how to effectively uh, have Uh, Anna's good side sway to him. Parang ganun yan. Kaya, kumbaga, it's a uh, problem-solving gear shift for the main protag. Eh, and judging by um, his um, his 10-year-old demeanor. Ibang-ibang kasi yung demeanor ni ni Neo when he was 10. It's It's a far cry from the demeanor he has now. It's a far cry. Kumbaga, yung yung demeanor niya when he was 10, ganun na ganun yung demeanor ngayon ni Rin. Halos ganun. <laughs> so, uh, what? you can now go back to um, uh, to that uh, to that fight uh, Ren and Johan na nagtabla sila. So, you can now go back to that episode and say, Ah, okay. Kaya pala kayo nagkasundo. Kasi, yung ugali mo rin, ganyan na ganyan si Yo nung 10 years old siya. <laughs> Second gear ship was, of course, the, the souvenir shop scene. Kahit si Ana nga nagtakay. Why did I call this a gear ship? Kasi, number one, finally, Yo 
has manned up to a demon. At ganito kalaki pa. <laughs> ganito katilikado pa yung tala yung talaga naninira na ng material na bagay ito. It can it can destroy solid objects. Number two, um, there's hope for Anna that she can uh, that she can fully control her powers. Kaya kaya ako tinawag na gear shift ito. It's a um, character development gear shift for both of them. Pwede. Alam nyo, ang episode na to, mayroong backstory within a backstory. So, the backstory within a backstory is Matamunis backstory. The pinnacle of that is when uh, when he delivered the final blow to to the patch how. That was uh, the final gear ship. Bakit ko din na gear ship? Because we now know kung bakit medyo reclusive si si Matamuni. Siya pala ang tumumba sa huling how. <laughs> uh, you could see it in his um in his in the way uh, in the way he moves. May hesitancy si parati. Especially when he is around yo. He knows uh, the entire Asakura family knows that Yo is only one half of how. So, talagang uh, talagang aware siya na, that five years from now Yo and how will face each other for the right to become Shaman King. No brainer. We now know kung Ano, ano ano naman ang pinaghuhugutan ni ni Matamune? This uh, the moment he divulges this to Yo, lalo maintindihan ngayon si Yo ang big picture ng ng buong shaman business or or how to um uh, how to conduct probably how to conduct himself as a shaman and uh, dapat ngayon pa lang maganda na siya para sa shaman fight. So, these three gear shifts that I saw, mm, I don't think it will play a role in future episodes. It has played a role in the past episodes. Now, if you, uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to binge watch the Shaman King reboot, what, kung ayaw mo sundan yung chronological order ng mga episodes, kung yari, meron ka naintindihan, wala kang naintindihan sa sa mga past episodes, you can now go to this one. Kung bakit, um, kung paano nagsimula ang ang relasyon nila nila Yo at Ana. These three gear sets have already played their role in this anime. Just look at the past episodes. Talagang, you're, you'll now realize, ah, ganun pala. Mm, ah, ganito pala si Ana noong araw. Mm, mas pasaway pala kayo <laughs> Plot wise, malinis. Kaid, you can na you can set aside Matamonis backstory for a while and just enjoy the main continuity of this backstory. Okay, na ako magtatalter si Matamone regarding his uh, story. Importante rin yon para malaman din natin kung ano yung pinaghuhugutan niya. But you don't have to. You don't have you you don't need a visual reference for that. Kaya malinis pa rin ang plot. So pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. And well, inannounce naman na ano eh, na may part three. Eh. Halo ka tapos. <laughs> so inannounce naman part three. So the final scene is setting us up for that ano for that um for that uh hopefully it's the final part. So, wala mong reklamo. Uh, this backstory, this whole backstory arc is um, justified naman eh. Because we now know how Yo and Ana's relationship started. Kasi, um, ang nag-trigger sa flashback na to, yung pagkaka-resign ni, ano, ni, ni Yo sa Shaman fight. Tapos hindi siya napigilan ni Ana in time. Yeah. It's all in good. 
So, Summon King 2021, episode 31. Hmm. Bakit? Kasi medyo ano eh. Um, excuse me. Matamunis backstory sequence to tell you honestly, mga kalaysa, Patreon. Is um the visual thing, it's totally unnecessary. Mabuti pa, ipakita mo na lang si Matamuni mismo na nagkikwento ng kanyang backstory. I'm not saying that uh, it's unimportant. But the the um the visual part of the sequence is not important at all. Kaya, one thumb up lang. Sana, ginawa nga lang nila, they just showed uh, Matamuni telling this story. And minsan, pakita yung lola ni, ni Yo or sila Yo at Ana na uh, trying to figure each other out. Nakita, nakita naman yung sino yun, di ba? So, nagla, una naglalakad si Ana, tapos si Yo sumusunod sa kanya. Sana, ganon. Pwede yun. Mas, uh, for me, mas feel ko ang ganitong, ang ganong mga, ano eh, ang ganong sequences. Kesa namang, eh, Backstory arc na nga ito. Babanata mo pa na isang visual na backstory. So, in order for uh, for the viewers to totally get the idea that Matamuni is telling his own backstory, hindi na niya, hindi, hindi na nila sana nilagyan ng visual reference to his backstory. Baka, hayaan mo siya magkwento. Yung main continuity na lang ng, ng episode ang i-focus nyo. That would be more uh, satisfying. So again, Summon King 2021 episode 31. Sorry, one time on that ah, Totally unnecessary yung, yung visual na backstory sequence ni Matamune. So what do we do now? Well, of course, we do the drill. We wait for next week and watch that particular episode hopefully matapos na I really want to get back into uh, into uh, the actual continuity of the anime kasi what's um, ano ba ang gag ano ba ang mga susunod na hakbang ngayon ni Yo ngayon at wala na siya sa, sa shaman fight or team full body hot springs for that matter I, we, I really want to get back into that uh, get back talaga into the actual continuity of the anime kaya Sana matapos na ito. And I hope they don't give us another visual reference to a sub backstory kasi this entire backstory arc is yeah, I admit it isn't over. Pero wag sana tanggalin ang focus natin by cinching in another backstory. Kaya If you're on Patreon, wait for my next upload. If you're exclusively uh, following the ARD Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. So, we pick up where we left off from the last episode. Ito palang nakita natin babae sa na nakang two sides doon sa ibabo ng uh, parang isang napakataas na building. Big name pala yun ng serial killer. Iniwan yung bangkay doon. So, uh, the serial killer's name is Misurin. Pinakita sa opening scene, kontrolado siya ni Metropoliman dahil binigyan siya ng arrows at saka wings. Talk about crazy shit. I don't wanna go into the details as to how gory or sexual this episode is. So ganito na lang. Nagkakaroon tuloy ng moral dilemma si, si Mirai. Because of uh, Nanato's uh, instigation, so to speak. Let's just say that um, Mirai's moral dilemma just, uh, just almost made him crazy in this, in this particular scene. Yeah. <laughs> Hindi niya nakayanan yung, ano, yung tinde ng, uh, uh, ng pag-iisip. 
plus yeah it involves sake so uh, iniwan mo na at that ni Nana to so bumalik na lang kinabukasan kasi may nabikti ba na naman si si Misurin nakita ni Nana to sa TV na merong meron na naman biktima so takbo sa uli kay Lamirai uh, with uh, with guns bullets and two uh, motorcycle suits na dinisign niya para sa kumpanya nila pero hindi uh, nila pa sa publiko dahil uh, it, it was deemed too heavy for motorcycle riding so binigyan niya si Mirai ng uh, lighter version and sa kanya yung heavier version <laughs> sabi nga ni Nase you look like a superhero Mirai final scene kaya pala hindi nag nagpapakita si Metro Poleman doon may pinlata pala siyang bomba pinasabog niya ang bombang yon kasama si Yan, si Nana to at si Misurin Mirai was was witness to it all yung pagsabog grabe let's just break this down ARD style pace well I don't know but the opening scene kicked it kicked the pacing off it was slow but absolutely excruciating. Mala. Mala higurashi ang pacing. Parang ganyan. Pero yung uh, yung build up nandoon pa rin to the final scene. Do I have complaints about this about the, about the pacing of this episode? <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> Talagang it was really tough to watch, but uh, the pacing was necessary for this kind of uh for this kind of uh, for this kind of an episode plot wise first gear shift here was when um, yeah during the opening scene no nang pakita si Metro Polyman while Miss Rin was raping her victim why did I call this a gear shift? simply lang this goes to show you that um, well Metro Polyman's evil has just taken another step uh Lumevel up ang pagiging kontrabida ni Metro Polyman dito. Cause, well, he is basically controlling this psycho of a girl with, uh, gave her, well, even gave her, uh, God candidate powers. Para lang ma-achieve yung goal niya na ipalabas lahat ng God candidates para mapatay niya lahat. Second gear shift was when, um, Nana to basically um, explored uh, Mirai's um, what you call this moral standards so to speak why did I call this a gear shift it just goes to uh, to show us that um, Mirai is a high level god candidate but with um uh, with a really strong moral dilemma. Kumaga, the principle of self-defense is not in his, uh, ano eh, it's not in his playbook. Masa, uh, it's wrong to kill people, it's wrong to hate people, yeah, it's wrong to hate people, but, um, uh, when it comes to, when it comes to this, push becomes shove. You really need to kill someone. <laughs> final gear shift was during uh, the final scene. Buti na lang. Wala si Mirai doon. Baka nadali rin siya. So why did I call this a gear shift? Again, Metro Polyman's evil has leveled up. He is more than willing to... Uh, he's willing to become a mass murderer just to... Uh, just to draw out these other god candidates. So... <laughs> These three gear shifts that I saw, especially the first and the last, uh, really made us see how evil Metropolitan can be. He's the real serial killer here. So he just hired another serial killer to do his dirty work. Ayun nga, na draw out si Nanato, and we have no idea if he survived the blast. Bluff wise. Malinis. Because, well, if you have 
a very disturbing continuity. Uh, if you plan to show a very disturbing continuity to an episode, yeah, the plan should be this clean. <laughs> Talagang, um, ipinarandam sa atin ng Signal MD na this is one tough to watch episode. At least the opening and final scenes. One of the most disturbing plots I've ever seen in an episode. And why? Because it's this clean. So pace, flow, and plot, they came together for this episode. Well, so far, um, it's one of the most tough to watch episodes this anime season. So, Platinum End, Episode 6. Every time I review this anime, I am always at a loss for words. Looks like the creators of Death Note have done it again. Talagang, uh, although this one involves angels, it's 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 really tough to watch. It makes you makes you wanna think. Na, paano pa kung si Satanas mismo ang involved dito? Kung uh, if he threw his hat into the storyline. No, uh, makes you wanna think. Parang gusto na niyang uh, uh, gawing alipin si Metro Polyman. Eh. If not, uh, kung hindi pa, kung hindi pa. Talagang, uh, you would absolutely hate this guy. Talagang, he is the, he is the big bad. Confirm na, confirm na, confirm na. That he is the big bad of this anime. Si Metro Polyman. Also known as uh, Kanade Oryo. That's Oryo Kanade. That's his real name. Remember the name. Because <laughs> if you don't, you're um, you're not intently watching this anime. You're just after the visuals. So again, Platinum End Episode 6. This is another mic drop. So what do we do now, mga ka-lifestyle Patreon? We do the drill. We wait for next week. Watch the next episode. And for for you at Patreon, wait for the next upload. So, well, kayo mga ka-lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. But anyway, gagawin kong isang buong rundown na lang ang story ng episode to. It's basically um, um nagkanya-kanyang racket ang ang tatlong bida. Towa and sets na handling this uh, this huge giant rock demon which eventually natalo nila. Ito namang si uh, Moroha uh, hinayo siya ni Takechio na maging bodyguard. So, well, uh, punta si Moro ka dun sa, sa bayang sinilangan ni, ni, uh, ni Takechio. She gets to uh, meet one of the OG characters of Inuyasha again. Si, uh, si Hachi. Si Hachimon. Uh, isa sa mga most trusted na alipores ni Inuyasha ito. And uh, she's into her usual antics <laughs> na basta na lang susugod, eh ayun. Mm. Ang sasalo mo sa kanya ngayon, yung, yung mga yung mga yung mga gwardiya ng re-ready nila sa anang tower. In the final scene, uh, Riku said it well kasi inobserve sila ni ano eh, sila nila Riku at ni Rion. Sabi nga ni Riku, Setsuna is not the one who needs protecting. It's Lady Towa. So, well, na, nun, nung na-realize ni 
towa yun, natimeme na lang siya, and eventually, Setsuna kills the rock demon. So let's break this down, ARD style. Eh, hindi ko, hindi ko talaga patatagalin ng anong to, kasi nalolobat na rin yung cellphone ko. Pace! Overall, the pacing is um, moderate. Kaya naging moderate kasi nagkaroon ng ano eh, nagkaroon ng funny moments si Moro dito. Yung um, her side of the story is a, is a rather funny one. Kasi nagkatong uh, well, eventually naging misadventure to. Kumbaga, na-miscalculate niya yung security measures ng ng kasa na papasukin nila. Inismol niya yung yung mala CCTV na matanggal noon. <laughs> Ayun, unang sugod pa lang. Oh! Diyan ka lang. <laughs> sabi ng, sabi ng, uh, ng magic eye na to. So, tinapat, tumapat sa kanya. Nung tumapat sa kanya, hindi na siya gumalaw. <laughs> the pacing was moderate. Also, because of um, Toa's self-discovery. If it weren't for Kohaku's um, kumbaga, side training, hindi marirealize siguro ni Toa na sa pala may mali. It's probably what Setsuna has been trying to tell her all along. Uh, Setsuna doesn't need protection. Pero siya, oo. That's what the pace will make you realize. Now, flow naman. I only saw two gear shifts here. First one was when uh, Moroha was hired by Takechiyo to, be, to, become her bod, to become his bodyguard. Kasi, yun nga, babalik siya doon sa hometown niya para... Well, to take his rightful place, I don't know, medyo, medyo malabo pa yung talagang mission ni Moro Harito eh. But why did I call it a gear shift? It just confirms to all of us that aside from her adventures with her cousins, tumatrabaho rin sa ibang, sa iba si Moro ha. This gear shift certifies na raketera si Moro ha. Siya ang raketera talaga sa tatlo. Second and final gearship was when Moroha realized, ane, was when Toa realized mid battle. Right? Pupugutan na niya ng ulo yung giant rock demon. Doon niya na realize na. Oy. Tama sinabi ni ni Sir Kohaku. Well, it's okay to run away. Never have regrets anymore. So No, why did I call this a gear shift? Kung tinuloy lang niya yung ataking yun, wala na. Wala nang ulo yung rock demon na yun. O di siya nakadali, hindi si Setsu na. So, I don't know. You can call this a reality check moment for Toa? Pwede. Just goes to show you, but through this gear shift, that Toa is the weakest link in this chain. Dito talaga lumama sa pagiging weak ni Toa. That um, she has a lot to learn in mastering the sun seeking. Pero hindi niya mamamaster ito hanggat di niya um, nasosolve ang issue na to about uh, about um, always attacking head on. Yung pagiging reckless niya. No. Sinabi na mismo ni Kohako. It's okay sometimes to run away. Because well, you get to re-strategize, you get to rethink your um your, your plan on how to take out your enemy. At this rate, hindi kaya ng tatlo si 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 ano si Kirin Maru again. If they can only resolve their own personal issues, Kirin Maru will Kirin Maru is dog shit. All these two gear shifts will play a role down the line in season 2. Okay, if it, if it plays out uh if it plays out wrong, mapapatay sila ni Kirin Maru. Plot wise. Planchado. Hindi mo masasabi malinis because uh, there are two sides to the story. Pero the way they transition from one story to the other then back to the then back to the original. Ayos lang eh. I got no complaints when it comes to the plot. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode, giving us, well, 
a sort of character development uh, episode in full when it comes to um, Toa and Moroha. So, Yasuhime the second act, episode 7. Hindi ko na naman makakalimutan. What the fuck? Bakit? Well, there's something wrong with Sunrise not emphasizing Toa's issues that well. Kumbaga! Okay. Kohaku is an OG character. Dapat lang na ipakita niya kay Kitoa kung ano ang mali niya. He, he's in a position to do that. Kasi... Kaibigan naman ng pamilya nila Kohako, si Inuyasha. Ang pamilya ni Inuyasha. So, kung po sa ba Inuyasha, Kagome, si, si Tandang Kaide, and of course, Moroha. Oh, he is in a position to teach Toa on how and when to run away. At medyo hindi... Um, medyo nakalimutan ni Toa at that moment, yung pupugutan niya ng ulo. Pagano'n eh. She, she, was, she was really aiming for the head. Pero medyo nag-stop siya nung uh, kumaga tinignan lang siya ng uh, kumaga medyo nag medyo nag puppy dog look yung ano yung 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 rock demon. Kumaga oh, tingnan mo na. Hindi na ako lalaban. Huwag mo na. Huwag mo na akong tirahin sa ulo. So, doon tumigil, do, kumbaga doon tumigil si Toa. So, I don't know if she's uh, learned her lesson already, but this rock demon is not, uh, it's not the right demon for Toa to learn her lesson. Mahina ito eh. Kaya ang daling tinalo ni, mag-isa lang tinalo ni Setsun eh. If, um, the demon they were trying to take out is strong enough. Matututo ng gusto si Toa eh. Pero, ang hina nang dating sa akin ng ano eh, ng, ng character development ni, ni, ni Toa rito. That's why I only gave it the one thumb up. Ang hina nang dating. But, don't get me wrong, Patreon, mga ka lifestyle, it's still a good episode. It's still an entertaining episode. So again, Yasuhime the second act, episode 7. Punta mo. Sorry talaga, fans ng uh, my fellow Inuyasha fans. Punta mo lang talaga. Hindi ako contento sa character development ni Toa rito. So what do we do now? Well, simply lang. We do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Hopefully, um, kasi mukhang part 2 yung susunod eh. Hopefully, Toa has learned her lesson and in a big way. And of course, there's more of us adventure that we need to, we really need to watch. Talaga nakakatok eh. So, if you're on Patreon, wait for my next upload. And if you're exclusive to the ARD, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Rundown time. The episode started with Naomitsu uh, wants to duel this um, this uh, card professor na uh, tinatawag daw nila. And um, after the opening credits, uh, we find him uh, lying in uh, in Sakura's house, in, in Sakura's uh, place. Wala nga. Ang penthouse unit pa sa isang uh, condo complex eh. Basically, Hiyori suggested that we should stage a rescue mission. Kasi, malakas ang ugong-ugong at that point na Kaisen has been experimenting on people. Balitang-balita nga rin daw sa Ninyo Tokyo Yu yun, sabi ni Naomitsu. And well, the mission has been... Uh, 
uh, the mission has been set into motion. Excuse me. Since, well, um, Namitsu has been recognized. Uh, well, kilalang kilala na si Namitsu dun sa, sa pinaka hideout ng department na to. He, what, ano muna siya? Uh, look out mode dun sa labas. So, yung tatlo, pumasok. So, nagpanggap sila bilang tourists. Pina, pinatalaw sila ng, ng school nila para mag-field trip. Yan, to, to get a tour of the, um, of the entire scientific complex. Napansin na lang ni Hiyori na wala na si Sakura. Napansin, no, uh, na, napansin na rin ni Tero to. Then, they accidentally found this secret entrance na may, mayroon tinulok na tatlong libro nun si Tero to kasi nagbabadali si Hiyori. Natulog niya ganon. So, may bumukas na malaking pintong ganon with a staircase leading down. So, sinundan nila. Eventually, led them to this secret laboratory. The PA system went on. Ayun, nagsalita si Kaisen. I have your friend. You, you do as you're told, I will not harm her. Well, eh, sabi, ng, sabi ni Tero to, Nope. Irerescue ko si Sakura. So, pinaupaya na lang niya kaila Hiyori at Naomitsu. Nakailam na si Naomitsu eh. Tinawagan siya eh. Kasi missing nga si Sakura. To deal with the minions. <laughs> He was able to um, take a shortcut to where Sakura is. Sabi ni Kaisen, Since you're here, let's battle. Ooh, the battle is on. The duel progressed with Kaisen leading. All of a sudden, through um, Teroto's um, siguro one-shot combo, nag, uh, it, it became a seesaw battle. Pero, in one turn, lumumang uli sa laban si Kaisen. Kaya ang sinabi na ni, ni Teroto, This is now a battle between your lecture and my gamble. Bring it! <laughs> Dito na nagkumpisa yung, yung rally ni Tero to, which ended in Kaisen losing all his lives through five straight um, burst triggers. <laughs> Talo si Kaisen. So they were able to rescue all the um, all the all those people that were in the beds. Yung kasi yung mga pinakidnap ni Kaisen para eksperimentohan. And Sakura uh, one up Kaisen by stealing some streaming device na inon niya at in-stream sa buong laboratory. So, lahat ng pagyayabang niya, lahat ng uh, lahat ng evil thoughts na, inila, na idinaldal niya kaila Sakura at Tero to, alam na ng buong lab. So, what? Wala nang, wala nang ibang tao sa laboratory. Final scene. Uh, we just saw that um, si Higuma tumawag sa kanya. Sinabi ni Higuma over the phone sa kanya that the king is done with you. Basically. Then, all of a sudden, um, Kika's puppets, dalawa, uh, they were trying to... Wow. They were trying to... It was really disturbing. I think they tried to pluck Kaisen's eyes out. Kasi yun ano eh. Parang yun ang feeling ko eh. Then while, siguro while this was happening, Naomitsu was going over the data that they got from from Kaisen. Nakakita niya, may connection pala, ta tama, may connection si Higuma kay Kaisen. Higuma's full name is Mario Higuma. And, mukhang kilala rin ni, ni Naomitsu ito. <laughs> Excuse me. I got excited there. So let's break this down, ARD style. Pace. Una una sa lahat. Teratos, uh, this win by Terato is one. Uh, personally, uh, I've been uh, I've been watching card game anime since uh, since 2004. Okay. This is one of the most calculated wins. 
I have ever seen in a card game anime. Walang ganito sa Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> and I've seen a few episodes of the original Card Fight Vanguard. Wala rin ganito. As in, talagang come from masasabi mong come from behind win yung ginawa ni Tero Torito. Talaga, he took a huge gamble. And the pacing will make you realize that. Kasi, the moment na nawala si Sakura sa paningin nila, nila Tero Tot Hiyori, that's when the pace picked up. Kasi, Tero Tot's hander went missing all of a sudden. If the pacing was uh, was too fast, especially ne, in the uh, in the battle scene, okay lang kung ganong abilis. Kasi, mukha talaga, mukha talaga nagtagal yung laban nila Tero Tot Kaisen. Pero, yung excitement, yung thrill ng battle scene na yun, nandun pa rin. So, tama lang yung, yung, uh, yung bilis ng pacing dun. Saktong-sakto lang. No complaints about the pacing. Talagang, wow. It's very satisfactory for a card game anime, yung pacing nito. Flow naman. Well, first gear shift here was when, well, Hiyori suggested to stage a rescue mission for those, uh, for those missing persons. Yung uh, supposedly na kinidnap ni Kaisen. Why did I call this a gear shift? Simply lang. It triggered the episode. <laughs> Second gear shift was when Kaisen himself challenged Teroto to a battle. Why did I call this a gear shift? It just goes to show you how arrogant this son of a bitch is. <laughs> Halata eh. So, the way he um he had his uh, his lackeys um fight now Mitsu first. He hindi, hindi muna siya. He's a good mix of coward and blowhard. The latter spelled doom for him when he challenged Teruto to a battle. Eh, sinabi pa niya kay Teruto during the battle na, I want to become the king. Salam lang na siguro ni Teruto. <laughs> Compared to my sister, you're dog shit. <laughs> Hindi naniniwala sa swerte. So, oh, pinakita ni Teruto how he incorporates luck into his battling style. That's what this gear shift will also tell you. Final gear shift was... The post-credit scene, the final one. Itong Mario Higuma na to, maraming katalantaduhang alam ito eh. And to think that this is Kika's handler. Well, Sakura is not as ruthless as this guy. And, um, marami palang atra... Yeah, this is what, this is what actually the, the, the gear ship is telling me. Maraming atraso ito. Si, Higum, si Higuma And I think one of them is Naomitsu Kasi kilala rin siya ni Naomitsu So we can now simply assume that uh, Naomitsu ha also has an axe to grind against Higuma Probably Kilalang kilala niya eh Buong pangalan, sinabi niya Mario Higuma So these three gear shifts that I saw um, the final one will play a role down the line. Well, more likely in the second half of this anime's run. Build Divide Code Black is only 12 episodes. This is episode 6. So we're done with the first half of the run. Plot wise. Malinis. Although may backstory, top. Ganito yan. Tsaka na lang pinakita. Uh, moments after the opening credits. So, kumbaga, it's part of the main continuity of the episode. Binalikan lang. Uh, up to the point where um, Kaisen himself challenged Naomitsu and, well, he destroys Naomitsu, obviously. Mahalas ni Kaisen. Naomitsu spilled the beans as to what happened. That's why I call it a gear ship. <laughs> it actually helped trigger the episode. Malin, kaya malinis pa rin ang plot. 
hindi mo masasabing planchado because binalikan lang ni ni Naomi so kung ano yung nangyari sa kanya bakit siya uh, nadatnan na lang ni Tero to sa harapan ng tent niya nakabu, naka, nakabulagta and then nakandusay I can't even classify that as a bad story kasi it's not that it is not that uh, long ago it probably happened um kasi matagal daw na passed out si ano eh si Naomitsu so it yeah it happened several hours ago lang so it's so it can be considered part of the main continuity of the episode kaya malinis ang plot so pace flow and plot they all came together for this episode guys giving us another slam bang Oh, uh, battle scene. If that's not a calculated win to you, I don't know what is. Ako, I'm a Yu-Gi-Oh player, but I am impressed as to how Teroto beat this guy. Through a combination of luck and math. So, Build Divide, Cold Black, Episode 6. Tignan na makalimutan. Tignan na mag-isip. Mm. Two thumbs up. After an episode that is that doesn't have a battle scene, kasi medyo talaga na disappoint ako eh. Uh, Ang laki ng ibinawe ng anime na to in this episode. Wow, it really gave us, yeah, technically a slam bang episode, all because of the battle scene. Talagang inasabi ko sa inyo mga kalaistal Patreon, it is one of the most calculated wins. I have ever seen in a card game anime. I've yet to spot. Um, may mga nakita rin ako uh, in some of the in some of the different Yu-Gi-Oh series. Um, uh, kung maga talagang kinalkula ng main protag yung panalo niya sa duelo. But here, it's a combination of luck and arithmetic. <laughs> Pero tos, um awareness of how many Buster cards the enemy has used uh, so far, it's it's serving him well. It's probably the foundation of his playing style, don't you think? Tingin nyo. Comment below, ha? So again, Build Divide Cold Black, Episode 6. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up. Wow. First two thumbs up after two weeks, mga lifestyle. So what do we do now, Patreon? Mga lifestyle? Simple. We do the drill. We wait for next week. And for those of you here on YouTube, wait for the next episode. For those of you on Patreon, wait for my next upload. So until next time, well, enjoy the other reviews in this digest.